Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Read Report. Uh, appreciate you guys taking this time to hear me out <clears throat> as I have recently returned from a camping trip, so I haven't really been on here much or at all, probably since the Cowboy Giant game, week one or week two or something like that. But I'm back. I'm back, and it's not a uh, pleasant return in terms of like what's been going on with the Carolina Panthers, uh, but... There's, there is more than just the Carolina Panthers, but that is something that I wanted to start with because let's just get it out the way. So, in the beginning, uh, during the summer, leading up to the season, leading up uh, to training camp and things like that in preseason, you know, at first I was, I was before preseason, I was really uh, high on the Carolina Panthers. I thought maybe, you know what I'm saying, like, because of the roster they constructed with Sanders and Thielen and Chark and, you know, drafting the young quarterback and the defense already being a stable, they're already being, you know, a top-notch defense. Uh, I always mention and go back to 2021 to where they the Panthers won just five games, but they still had the number two overall defense. It's just offense did nothing to um, help them. Offense did nothing to help the Panthers out. Did absolutely nothing for them. So, and and that's you know one of the reasons they won just five games. It, it goes to show just how important your offense is. And but like I was saying, also Jonathan uh, Minga, you know, drafted him as well. And again, I was really high on the Carolina Panthers. I really thought this team could uh, could make some noise in the NFC. Not Super Bowl or anything like that, but win the NFC South, you know, get a playoff spot. And as the preseason, as I watched the preseason and I saw the game against the New York Giants, the preseason game against the Giants, and I saw just how shaky Bryce Young was when it comes to his command. And it's not all Bryce, it's coaching as well. I do feel like Frank is the right guy, but I also don't believe that Bryce Young was his choice. And whenever a new head coach comes in and upstairs forces him to pick a person that he really doesn't want to pick, and I'm not saying that's true, that's just what I believe, and, 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 but he's forced to pick a guy he originally didn't want to go with. That, that always almost never really ends well. And you can see it right here with what we're dealing with now. But as I saw that game and as I saw, you know, the Lion game, I started to sour on the Panthers because to me, I saw same old, same old. But first of all, with the quarterback and even when you look at the regular season games, um, he, he, I've never, you know, well, I, I'll be honest. After the Atlanta, pretty much the first half of that game, I haven't watched the Panther game since. But I've been following it, and and I'll explain why. I know a lot of you are saying, "Well, how can you come up here and criticize if you haven't watched?" It's because I can't subject myself to that. I am a true Panther fan. I've been a Panther fan since 2001. That's my team. I'll never pick another team. It's just when they are as terrible as they are, I, I just can't watch them. I just stop watching. I'll follow the score, but I can't subject myself to just being upset all the time because this team is always in a position to win the game and they keep losing. So no, I haven't watched, but looking at following the game and seeing the clips that some people, that people are posting and things, I see, I've never seen so many delay of games as if, and, 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 and it's so predictable every time, take the Minnesota game uh, today or yesterday, Every time they got up threatening, you know, in the red zone, you all they you, you, you just know that the next play is going to be a penalty of holding or they're going to get sacked and they're going to get pushed far back. To, and, and if you're a Panther fan, you know what I'm saying. It's so tough to just sit through. And I look and I'm following along. And I'm like, man, I'm glad I'm not watching this game because I'd be darn near throwing something at the television. They always get pushed back. Every time they get up there threatening, it, it was happening in the preseason. And I just saw it coming from a mile away. So I was like, I can't subject myself to it this year. 
I post I post about their heartbreaks every time, and I have people, loved ones, who just be like, "Oh, poor Jason!" Like, like they be really concerned about me. Like, I be like, I'm. It, it bothers me, but I'm not. You know, I would never go overboard. Like, it it, it doesn't. I, I get to a point to where it's like, okay, if this thing is, if this is bothering me this much, then I shouldn't be watching. And that's why I stopped watching Panther games. I cannot watch a team lose so many winnable games. Every game, they're 0-4 right now. And every game they've lost has been a winnable game. Atlanta, New Orleans, Seattle, Minnesota, all winnable games. At least with the Seattle game, you saw Andy Dalton could move the ball effectively, but the team just isn't good. Bryce Young, just the command of the offense, uh, the coaching and everything. It's, you know, people say fire the coach and all this, but honestly, it's to me, it's just, it's 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 poor execution. It's like, how many coaches are you going to keep firing? Because I'm not going to continue to go through the fact that, oh, new coach, let's see now, you got to give it a chance. No, I was done after week one because I saw it coming. And everybody, not everybody, but people were telling me, dude, it's just one week. Like, chill out. I'm like, no, I've seen this episode before. I've seen this episode plenty of times before. I've ran through it in a previous video. Take last season for an example. Plenty of games they could have won that they lost. Plenty. I'm going to go through them again. Last season, they, they won seven games. Lost to Cleveland in the opener. Winnable game. Eight wins. Lost to the Giants in week two, winnable game, nine wins right there. They won the division, but they win those two games. Because Tampa only won eight games last year. Arizona, winnable game. Uh, Atlanta, winnable game. Baltimore, winnable game. Tampa Bay, winnable game. Pittsburgh, winnable game. They, they and, and like I said, just because you lose close games, that doesn't mean that you are a good team, but good team, you just catching tough breaks. No, if you lose in close games, that your record is what you are. That makes you a bad team. And I'm not going to go through all like 2021 and 2020, all the winnable games, but you get the point. Carolina has, has because this is, this is my favorite team of all my favorite teams. Like I'm a Laker fan and I used to love the Panthers more than I like the Lakers. Angels. I don't watch the Angels anymore because I feel like they're just wasting away talent and they have these waste of seasons. I can't subject myself to it. Carolina, man. 0-4 again. Lost to Minnesota today. Started the game off by taking back a Kirk Cousins pick six, 99 yards, which was a franchise record. And then, of course, the predictable happened. The predictable happened. They couldn't get anything going on offense. The Vikings did not let them score a point on offense. They kicked two field goals, and they lost the game 21-13. Justin Jefferson, two touchdowns. You don't even have to watch the game to know how it went. You don't even have to watch to know how the game went. You just know that it was not a pleasant feeling. The Seattle game, the Saints game, the, and, and of course Detroit is going to roll them next week to completely like, you know, send somebody, put somebody out of a job. When they lose to Detroit, somebody's getting put out of a job. And then they're at Miami. Whoo! And then and then bye week and then home against Houston and talk about Houston. C.J. Stroud. That's another point I wanted to make. C.J. Stroud looking good. I low-key warned people about Houston. They said, nah. But it's still early, but Houston was a team that was on my radar. I'm like, hey, maybe they could surprise some people. But they're just 2-2, two and two, so let's let's wait and see. But they did put up 30 on a good Pittsburgh defense. But look at what we have coming up. Houston, after the uh, Lions and Dolphins in the bye week. Houston, C.J. Stroud. If you when you look on paper, who who has the better who has the better talent, Bryce or CJ? To me, it's Bryce. Who has the better talent? The, our opponent after Houston, Indy, or uh, Anthony Richardson? You saw the comeback he led today. Attempted to lead, he, he did get the game tied against <clears throat> against the Rams. Excuse me. But Anthony Richardson, another one, another rookie, who's not doing too bad. With their with their uh in the NFL. So why is it that Bryce Young 
it's looking like he he uh having trouble commanding this offense. Why are the Panthers losing all of these winnable games? Every game they've been in so far has been a winnable game. I'm looking at their schedule. I don't think they're going to go 0-17 because, I mean, they're not going to go 0-17. But I, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? People are like, oh, when they finally get that. First. Look, I don't care about their first win because they're not making the playoffs. I'm not going to rejoice when they win a game. I'm beyond that. That's it's it's that's not even something that I'm thinking about. Like, when they get their first win, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, Panthers finally won. But they not a good team. And what's frustrating is they should be a good team. It's not like they're a bad team and and I'm up here frustrated like this. No, they should be a good team. Jordan Love is not looking this bad as this. None of these quarterbacks that I see on our uh, schedule are not looking this bad. So yeah, I, I can't, I honestly just can't watch the games. It's too frustrating to watch. Fantasy football and just following it on whichever app I choose to follow it on. That's how I watch the game. That's how I follow the game. I watch it. So, yeah, I guess this is just turning to a venting session. Appreciate you guys taking this time to hear me out. Are you guys still watching the Panthers, Panther fans? How do you guys feel? Am I wrong? Let me know because I, I can't deal with it. I can't watch a team with this much potential be winless like this so like share comment subscribe and talk to you soon peace